We're now in Chapter 2 about dividing whole numbers. This is Lesson 2.1. We're going to place the first digit in the long division quotient. We can tell where to place the first digit of a quotient in long division by relating division to multiplication. As inverse operations, multiplication can help us estimate a partial quotient. Here we have 265 divided by 5. And we look at this and say, can the 5 fit into the 2? No. We're going to have to include the hundreds and the tens as 26 tens. 5 fits into 26 tens. We think 5 times some number is not equal to 2, so 5 times some number is close to 26. Well, that would be 5 times 5. The first digit of the quotient will go above the 6 tens in the dividend as 5 tens. So now we multiply the divisor by this 5, and we get 25. We subtract that product from the 26 tens. Then we have a 1 when we do our subtraction, and it's this 5's turn to come down. We ask ourselves 5 times some number is equal to 15. Well, that would be 3. 5 times 3 is 15. We write that partial quotient above the 5 1's in the dividend. We multiply 5 times 3 and subtract that product from 15, and we have 0. By estimating how many 5's can fit into 26 tens, we were able to find the value of the first digit. And because we were working with the tens place, the first digit was placed above the tens place, above the 6. So for estimating to place the first digit, the first thing we do is look at the thousands place. We have 2,392 divided by 4. Looking at the thousands place, 2 can't be divided by 4 without regrouping to include this hundreds place. And we round the 23 to 20 hundreds, which can be divided by 4. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 5 hundreds is close to 23 hundreds. We put a 5 above the hundreds place, and 4 times 5 is 20. We do our subtraction, and there's a 3. Next, we look at 39 tens. Because we got a 3 when we subtracted, it was the 9's turn to come down, and this is 39 tens. We think 4 times 9 tens is close to 39 tens. 4 times 9 is 36. We do our subtraction, and we put a 3 here. We did our subtraction. We've got a 3, and now it's the 2's turn to come down. We have a 32. And we look at the 32 1's to be divided by this 4. And we think 4 times 8 is equal to 32. We put an 8 above the 1's place, and 4 times 8 is 32. We subtract it and get 0 as a remainder left over. It divided evenly, so 2,392 divided by 4 is equal to 598. Now, because these are inverse operations, we can check our math with multiplication. We just have the quotient multiplied by the divisor, and it should equal the dividend. So we take the 598, we multiply it by 4, and it should equal this dividend, 2,392, and it does. So we know we did our math correctly. Here we have 3,207 divided by 6. We look at this 3,000, and we think 6 cannot fit into this 3. So we can include the hundreds place and say 6 can fit into 32, and 6 times 5 is 30. We write the 30 here, we do our subtraction, that's a 2, and now it's this zero's turn to come down. 6 can fit into 20 three times, 6 times 3 is 18, we do 6 times 3, we write the 18, do our subtraction, we get a 2, and now it's the 7's turn to come down. 6 can fit into 27 
four times because six times four is 24. So six times four is equal to 24. We do our subtraction and we have a three. That means we have a remainder of three that six cannot fit into. There is three left over as a remainder. And we can check this. We can multiply. So remember, when using multiplication to check if our quotient is correct, we need to add the remainder. We had 534 remainder 3 for our answer. To check it with multiplication, we're going to multiply 534 times 6. We do. We get 3,204. Then, when we're finished multiplying the quotient and the divisor, we add the remainder. So we're going to do this first, then we're going to add the remainder, and it will equal the dividend if we did our math correctly. Now this one is important because it gets a little tricky with this zero. We have 2,149 divided by 7. We think 7 into 2? No, it won't fit. We need to include the hundreds place. 7 can fit into 21 three times because 7 times 3 is 21. We write the 21 and subtract, and we get 0. Now it's the 4's turn to come down, but when we say, can 7 fit into 4? No, it can't. And it's not this one's turn to come down yet. So how many times can 7 fit into 4? 0. We put a 0 here as a placeholder, and 7 times 0 is 0. We do our subtraction, drop the 4 down. Now it is the 9's turn to come down. 7 can fit into 49 7 times, and 7 times 7 is 49. We subtract and get a 0. So when we got here, and it was the 4's turn to come down, and this was a 0, 7 could not fit into that 4. And it just came down, so it wasn't the 9's turn to come down yet. So we put a 0 as a placeholder, did the subtraction of 0. Now it was the 9's turn to come down. Now we could say 7 goes into 49 how many times? And we can check it with multiplication. We have 307 as our quotient. We multiply it by the 7 divisor, and it is equal to 2,149. So we did our math correctly. We did the quotient times the divisor to equal the dividend to check with multiplication. Estimating the quotient can help us place the first digit. It can help us even place the last digit. We have 238 divided by 5. We need to round this 238 to an amount that can be evenly divided by 5. We can round down to 200. And think of it as 20 tens divided by 5 is 4 tens. 5 times 4 is 20. We can subtract, and we would put a 3 here. But we were able to place that first digit by rounding this and estimating that 5 could go into 200 about 4 times. We place the 4 in the tens place for the quotient, because 20 tens divided by 5 is 4 tens. See? So if we rounded 238 up to 250, it will not work. If we thought of this as 5 can fit into 250 how many times? Well, 250 divided by 5 would be equal to 25 tens divided by 5. That would be 5 tens. So we would put a 5 up here, and then when we did 5 times 5, which is 25, this 25 is too big to subtract from the 23 tens. By rounding down to 200, it will work. We'll have an amount, 20 tens, that we can subtract. So 5 times 5 would be too large, because then we can't subtract the 25. 5 times 3 would be too small. If we put a 3 here, 5 times 3 is 15. When we subtract, we get an 8. This 15 is too small, because one more 5 could have fit into this 8. And our first digit in the quotient isn't large enough. By doing 5 times 4, it's just right, because then we get a 20, and when we subtract, we get a 3, and 5 will not fit into the 3 
until we bring down this 8 and say 5 can fit into 38. So if you're doing long division and you put a partial quotient up here and when you multiply and then subtract and you get a number that is larger than the divisor, then that means that number up here is too small. It wasn't big enough. The 5 could have gone into it one more time. Does that make sense? But if any of this is confusing, our next lesson, 2.2, we're going to be doing this again so you can stick with me. And remember that we can turn paper sideways to keep numbers in their correct place values. We can use the lines of the paper to keep our numbers in the correct column, even for multiplication. So we're going to do this again. In Lesson 2.2, we're going to be dividing by a one-digit divisor, and we're going to be checking with multiplication. And I hope I'll see you there. Have a great day. Bye.